they're going on my LinkedIn. They see my social proof. They see the testimonials. They see the people that I work with, right? They see my own track record. They see my client's track record. By the time they get on the call with me face-to-face and I match the personal brand and the essence and the values that is online and there's consistency, the deal is closed, right? So your job is to figure out how to create a perspective that you want everybody to perceive you as. And the way that you do that is to actually intentionally think about who you want to be on social media. What do you stand for? What are your values? How do you show up? What is your tonality on social media? What are the four or five things you're going to repeat over and over and over again to be consistent? Right? That's what branding is. Branding is consistency. And so you need to decide, like, what are my key messages? How do I want to make people feel after they read my stuff? How do I want to transform them? And what are the key things that I stand for that align to what I sell and also align to my own personal story? So, for example, with me, you're never too old or too young to do something new. Everybody told me I was too old to start a podcast. And then now I'm like a young entrepreneur. I'm too young to be an entrepreneur, right? You're never too old or too young to do anything. Um, or that life is limitless as long as you work hard uh, and, and things like that. So like I've got certain messages that I repeat in a million different ways, okay? The other reason why you need a personal brand is because you need to gain trust. And you gain trust by being vulnerable, by being your authentic self, by sharing personal stories, right? The people that you would give really sensitive information about you know your deepest, darkest secrets. They know where you live. Like if you're going to give somebody your bank account information, you're going to give that to somebody who knows your mother's name, you know, somebody who knows very personal things about you. And so you need to share personal things about yourself on social media so that people feel like they know you, they feel like you're an old friend, so they can build that trust before they even meet you. Okay. Um, I have a good example of this. I always post live streams on my on my LinkedIn. And a lot of my live streams are me interviewing other people. Now, whenever I play a live stream where somebody is interviewing me and I actually share my own story, I get maybe 20 times the amount of DMs because people relate to your stories. You could be talking about things all day. And until you share something personal about your own stories that show your authenticity, that shows your weaknesses, your strengths, you know, your, your, your saddest moments, what people feel connected by that and they trust you more when you share those things. Okay. So, so sharing those things actually gives you strength. It doesn't make you weak and it makes you magnetic and relatable. That's so good. Oh, I love that. Uh, now talking about podcasting, if you were to start all over again, or for the ladies who are looking to start their own podcast or start bringing as guests on podcasts, what are some advices that you will give them? Okay. So when it comes to podcasting, number one is you got to really want it. Okay. You got to want it for something else other than making money. You've got to be a creative person where you actually are really thinking about having thoughtful content that you feel is going to actually change people's lives, right? You can't do it for a selfish reason like money. You've got to do it for a selfless reason because it's going to take a really long time. You either need to want to do it for yourself, like you want to learn something, you're trying to get out of a rut yourself, so you use podcasting as like journaling, for example, or you want to learn from other people, and that's what's going to keep you motivated before you get the downloads, or you want to help other people, right? It's got to be a bigger reason than something like money, because it's not just going to happen overnight. And there's very few podcasters. It's like 2,000 podcasters that are making money off their podcasts and millions of podcasts out there, right? You've got to get a certain amount of downloads. And to that point, if you want to make it as a podcaster who gets sponsorships, you better be tech savvy. You better be ready to learn how to market, understand how to get subscribers, and be just as much as a nerd in terms of the marketing of your podcast as much as the production and the content of your podcast. And if you are an amazing person at content, 
your podcast is going to spread naturally also by word of mouth, right? So once that happens, hopefully, because you're an amazing podcaster with great content, people are going to approach you and want to help you. And you're going to need to figure out how to mobilize that, whether it's through internships or volunteer groups like I had, or whether it's hiring VAs or, or creating a team and figuring out how to monetize things and have a product or whatever it is, you got to figure out how to scale right? Because every successful podcast out there really has a team behind them. It's not just a one-man show usually, okay? So those are some of my tips. Um, being a podcaster, you really got to be a nerd. You really got to understand podcast SEO, marketing, production, content. Uh, but I think most of all, you need to really want to do it. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I think um, in today's day and age, everyone wants to start a podcast. So I'm glad you said that. Now, I'm also going to go the opposite direction because most of the people on this call are in real estate. And a lot of the people, maybe if they've even heard me say this, are raising capital. So I want to know if we're raising capital, we're raising money, and we're looking for maybe those high net worth individuals on LinkedIn. How would we develop meaningful relationships with people on LinkedIn? And like, how are, are you doing that? You have so many followers. Like, how can you actually develop those meaningful relationships? Yeah, I think, first of all, be intentional, right? Who are you actually looking for? LinkedIn is this amazing site where there's all this data that other platforms don't have. People are inputting data on their profile. They're putting where they work. They're putting the schools they went to. There's keywords all over their profiles. They're putting their titles. You don't have this information on other social media sites. So you can search anything on LinkedIn. So number one, it's like, who are you targeting? What are their titles? Where do they typically work? How do they describe themselves? What are the keywords that they write on their profile? How are you going to find these people in mass, right? That's the key on social media. You got to find them in mass. What, what events are they registering to? What groups are they part of? Again, what companies do they work for? These are all the ways that you can find these people in mass or free keyword search, right? Certain titles, find them in mass. Then you need to invite them and stay connected to them on the DMs. If you really want to form a relationship with somebody, you've got to have strong conversations in the DMs. And the way that you do that is by being somebody that's worthy to have a conversation in the DMs, okay? So again, it's back to this personal brand. Your personal brand is pitching before you're pitching. So that means you need to have an optimized profile. Your profile looks, to, needs. you need to have a good profile picture. You need to have a title that makes sense. People know exactly what you do. You need to have social proof, engagement, you want to be a thought leader on a certain topic, have something to stand for. And you also want to make sure when you're communicating with these female leaders or whoever you're trying to get investment with, that you're establishing common ground, right? So how do you actually relate to this person that you're speaking with? What is your common ground? Are you just two female leaders in the real estate space? Are you two you know, female power powerhouses? Can you give me some examples of some of the titles that you guys would look for in an investor? Um, I'm looking for someone who is wanting to have some passive income, someone who is strong in their field. I don't need someone who really under who's doing what I'm doing. I need someone who's powerful in their own industry. Probably yeah. So they don't like have to be doing the same thing as that. Or business, yeah, business owner. C-suite uh, employers. Employees. Yeah. So the common ground can be like as two powerful women who want to keep increasing their generational wealth or whatever it is, or want to increase your our passive income, right? So you want to find these people, you want to figure out who you're targeting, and you want to and you want to figure out how you can approach them in a way that seems relevant and not spammy. And usually that's common ground. So in your guys's case, since you're not reaching out to people in the same industry, and you're kind of cold outreaching to people who just have money, basically, right? You need to establish yourself as a thought leader and you need to bring in people from your content, okay? So having an impressive feed with information about the things that you sell. So passive income is one of the main like benefits of working with you guys. You should figure out all the keywords associated with passive income that people would search to find content on LinkedIn, 
okay? You need to infuse those keywords on your own profile because LinkedIn is actually looking at if you're an expert in the topic that you're speaking about. So if you start posting about real estate and passive income and none of those keywords are on your profile and you don't have a track record of speaking about those topics, LinkedIn is not going to show your content to other people because they are not deeming you as an expert. So you actually need to uh, spend time talking about the things that you want the algorithm to pick up. So you need to figure out what are your buckets of keywords. And you don't just have to have one bucket. And by, by the way, this is the future of all social media. It's called interest-based relevancy algorithms. Okay. So basically all of these social media sites have an, uh, an interest cloud for every single user. And that cloud shows like, what is the type of content this person is liking and commenting on? What are the things that they're searching on LinkedIn about? Basically, what is this person interested in? What do they have a track record of being interested? And what do they talk about? What is this person also talking about? What keywords are they using? And every user has an interest cloud. And basically, LinkedIn is just matching all the people who have similar interests. So you need to figure out how do I dominate certain interest clouds and use the same keywords over and over again. So maybe it's real estate and you think about all the keywords related to that. Maybe it's passive income and you think about all the keywords related to that and you build your content around that. Um, now, in terms of actually bringing people in through your content, you're going to need to figure out how the algorithm works so that you can get visibility, right? So I can kind of talk through that, but happy to pause there. I have, I have a quick question for you specific for the ladies. If they have partners in teams that they, that they work with, um, because we have solo entrepreneurs on the call, but then we also have people that have partners, um, would you suggest or recommend when you're putting together these interest clouds that they niche into something specific for each of their own personal brands, even though it still might be around the same uh, broader topic for whatever they do. I would say that you guys can have the same interest clouds as your business partners. Um, I think that because the way that it works is that all the sub keywords will be included in that cloud. Even if you, you don't say the keyword, as long as it's something that's like on the peripheral of that keyword, it will likely be included, right? So you guys can work off the same things unless you do different things and sell different things. If you sell the same thing, you guys should have the same kind of topics that you talk about. And in my masterclass, we actually do exercises to come up with our keywords and the keywords that we're going to talk about on social media. Great. And what are the five things that all of us can do right now to improve our LinkedIn profile? Because we all have some presence right now, but albeit maybe not the best. <laughs> yeah. So five things. Okay. Number one. Uh, treat your LinkedIn banner like a rotating billboard. People are popping on your LinkedIn and this is real estate that you can change and update. And so for my clients, for example, if they have a new book, if they have a webinar coming up, if there's a, a course that they have coming up, we change their billboard like it's a rotate. They, we change their uh, profile banner like it's a billboard and we solicit all the things that we have going on. And then you have a static one, like an evergreen one for when you're not promoting anything. So anytime you have something new or some sort of offer going on, you want to use your uh, banner as a rotating billboard because you get a lot of views there. And now they have a new like link in bio. Uh, it's not that new, but it's pretty new. And people can click and go off site and you don't get penalized for it. And so we get so many webinar signups, course signups, things like that, book, book purchases, because people are clicking that link in their bio. So that's number one, use your banner as a rotating billboard. Number two, infuse, like I mentioned, infuse your profile with keywords. Be intentional. Think about how you're going to describe yourself. The first 40 characters of your title is what's going to be visible in your actual post. So on the feed, okay, when you're posting on LinkedIn, it will say your name and then the first 40 characters of your title. That's what everybody sees if they don't go to your profile. So you should have what you do, who you serve very clearly in the first 40 characters of your title with keywords. 
so that people can start to find you and know exactly what you do. All right. Um, number three, in terms of having a great LinkedIn profile is to understand how the algorithm works, to get up to speed with how to post, not just what you're posting. LinkedIn is way more about how you post than what you post. It's about your publishing and engagement strategies. It's about making sure that you don't have dead connections so that people actually see what you're posting, that you're proactively bringing in people who take viral action and people who log onto LinkedIn so they actually see your content and you have a higher engagement rate and you're more likely to get shared on LinkedIn. So it's understanding the how of what you post and not just the what you post, all right? Um, so what am I on, five now, four, five, four, okay. <laughs> Number four, lean into photographs. Okay, lean into photographs. LinkedIn is not like other sites yet. They're trying to be more video first, but right now it's not like link, it's not like TikTok or Instagram. It's really not video first. Videos don't get shared as much on LinkedIn. And really the best performing asset right now is a vertical photograph. All right. So a taller photograph, kind of like a story photo takes up more real estate. So you take up more real estate in the feed, right? Longer is always better because most people are on their mobile phones. So you want a vertical format photograph or graphic, like a simple graphic, like a tweet card, quote card. It's the most shareable type of asset. And on LinkedIn, a share is the most viral action. So the more that you can get people to share your stuff, the more viral you're, you'll go, all right? My last kind of tip of how to rock it on LinkedIn is to make sure that your copywriting is succinct and entertaining, all right? I always say this, but social media is like poetry. You wanna treat it like poetry. You wanna make it entertaining. People don't like to read. They wanna be entertained. And especially on LinkedIn, like there's no videos to entertain people. You gotta entertain people with your words. So you've got to figure out how to get good on your copywriting. And that really doesn't take, uh, you really got to just practice to get good at your copywriting. And you really have to learn tricks like being repetitive, for example, uh, understanding how to use hooks and using line by line style copywriting. So no big chunky paragraphs, uh, using paragraph breaks and understanding that the formatting really matters in terms of how you're copywriting because you want to keep people engaged and entertained so they actually spend time on your post and don't just scroll right by it. Uh, and then another way to be engaging is by telling personal stories, right? When I go viral, it's usually because I spent time to tell a really personal story that I haven't told before. You know, when I get really personal and I talk about something bad that happened to me in the past and I showcase that weakness to everybody and people relate to that, it triggers their own personal stories. It triggers them to want to support me or not support me. It, like, uh, And the other kind of trick is to not be scared of controversy, right? Uh, to not put the whole kitchen sink in your post. So for example, I've got something that goes viral every time we post it up. It's um, when I'm hiring somebody, I only look for three things, character, character, attitude, and reliability. This post fires people up. Some people are like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Like we need more bosses like you out there. And then we've got the other people like, how, how can you not be hiring for skills? That's ridiculous. There's no skills included on this. Now, had I included skills as the fourth uh, bullet, it would not go viral because I'm saying, I know everything. I'm including everything in this post and there's nothing for anybody to add. So you want to think through when you're giving like any sort of list or explanation, what could somebody actually add to this? Or am I just being a know-it-all being like, these are the steps. No one's going to want to respond to that because you're not giving them a chance to include their own thoughts. And sometimes you want to purposely leave out the obvious stuff so that it will strike up a conversation. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Hala. So ladies, get ready. If you have questions uh, for Hala, start raising your hand now uh, or start putting your uh, your questions in the chat. Uh, we have a couple more questions, but one is what does she builds, owns, invest, she is me, mean to you? That was for me? 
Yes. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, what what our brand mean to you? She builds, owns, invests. Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, it doesn't mean that much to me yet, but it's very strong and powerful. And it seems like you guys have an awesome community. Like to me, I feel like it's all about community, supporting, empowerment. That's the feelings that it exudes so far. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mahala. Uh, we are, do we have questions or? We do. We do. I'm hoping, I'm hoping some people have some that they'll write down, or if someone does have a question that they want to ask live, raise your hand while you guys are writing. Hala, you've interviewed a lot of people, six years. <laughs> do you have a favorite person that you've interviewed? And why would you say that they are your favorite? You know, it's so funny. Um, a lot of my favorite interviews were early on. And I think it's just because it was so exciting to me. Right. You know, the more that you do it, it's like, I can't even believe sometimes the people that I'm interviewing. And I'm like, man, I only have two hours to study for this person. If this was four years ago, I would be spending like four weeks to study for this, you know, and it's just really surreal sometimes. So a lot of my favorite interviews are, are some of the ones from the beginning. So Robert Green was really cool. He wrote the 48 Laws of Power and we did like a two hour episode. Uh, I think it was episode 42 and 43 or 43 and 44. And it was so good. And I, re I did you remember the numbers time. or anything. Yeah, I uh, trust <laughs> me after like episode 100, I don't remember anything. It's all the it's all the oldest ones that I remember. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so, and I loved interviewing Gary V. That was really cool. He's one of my idols and I got to uh, interview him in his office. Um, I really loved to interview Alex Ramosi was really cool. Damon John was super cool. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks, it was Thank a pleasure. You. Really nice to meet everybody. Have a great evening. Bye all. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.